Well, friends, it has been an amazing weekend at the She Speaks conference. There was so many things that were so unexpected that happened in the conference that um, it really has been um, just God moving and doing whatever it is that he wants to do um, with the time that you devote to him. So I just wanted to kind of share a little bit with you about what I took from this conference and not necessarily the the writing or the speaking or or um, the teaching in that sense but really what God has done in me you know um, one of the most prevalent issues that I have noticed that just it just it's almost like a red flashing neon sign everywhere I go um, is that there are so many broken people that are are living lives in secret that are living their brokenness in secret there are so many people who um, are ashamed to speak they are ashamed to bring it to their church they're ashamed to bring it to their family members or ashamed to just share it with friends um, everyone every one of us has some kind of broken piece we have our our cross that we're carrying and you know the scripture that constantly constantly pops in my mind and i thought it was just for me is um is in revelations i think revelations 12 2 is it where um jesus talks about how we have overcome by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony you know we all wonder especially when we're in the middle of a battle, we all wonder, is it ever gonna be over? Am I ever gonna be on the other side of the battle? Am I gonna have victory? Am I gonna be able to celebrate a miracle? Am I gonna be able to celebrate he healing or freedom and restoration? And um, even just as, as Christians, as followers of the word of God and believers in his truth and in his promises, we can still doubt that those things will happen for us. We still question whether we will receive that miracle. Yes, the person over there, we, we see their victory and we celebrate with them, but secretly inside we're wondering, God, is it is it ever gonna happen for me? And you know, one of the things that that I, I learned the most this week and that stood out the most to me was the, the closing message from Lisa Turkhurst when she when she reminded us about the story of Adam and Eve and and the, the very beginning of a place of discouragement the very beginning of um, of that struggle that inward struggle when when we're actually noticing each other naked when we when we can see the brokenness in the other person when we when we ourselves are broken and when we recognize that that nakedness and that that transparency and the only thing that i kept thinking is the first thing that they did is they wanted to cover up the first thing that adam and eve did is they 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 were filled with shame and they wanted to cover up that was never the case before before the fall Adam and Eve can could be completely exposed as they were and they had no shame and they loved each other and they and they experienced the presence of God in that nakedness and through all of this I have come to a realization that I'm going even though I'm going through all this brokenness and even though I, I, I beg God sometimes to just pull me out. God, take this cup from me. Just take me home or something. You know, don't, I can't do it anymore. I can't carry this cross anymore. I can't feel this despair anymore. Even though I feel those things and they are very real and they are paralyzing and they are breathtaking, literally. Sometimes the pain takes your breath away. I have come to a realization and I, I, I truly believe that God is showing me that it is my calling 
it is part of my purpose to show and demonstrate that the brokenness and the nakedness of our humanity and of our circumstances and of our lives, the things that, that were never our fault or maybe they were, those things were never intended to, to bring us shame. That, that brokenness and that nakedness were never intended to bring us shame. They were intended to experience the fullness and the presence of, of God. And the more that we hide and the more that we live our lives in secret and the more that we let shame and embarrassment and consequences keep us silent, then the more we are denying the opportunity to be in the presence of our Father, to experience His love for us, to experience the intimate connection that we can have with our Heavenly Father that was intended to heal us and to bring us joy and to bring us freedom and to bring us wholeness. And so I am just starting to walk this out now. I am just starting to to lift my head in the midst of my pit and begin to talk about the things that I didn't talk about before and begin to lift my chin and know that I can be broken in front of others. And the more that we are broken in front of other people, you know, you're going to get those people that kind of kind of want to want to walk away or step away they're too uncomfortable they don't know what to say and i think that we've all felt this way you know when when someone when someone is broken in our lives or whenever we we walk by somebody and they're crying sometimes we keep walking cuz we don't know how we can help we we're, we're it makes us nervous it makes us anxious to be around somebody that's broken why is that i'll tell you why because their brokenness not only exposes our brokenness, but it forces us to step outside of the, the facade that we're living, that we're hiding in. Because the truth of the matter is, is that we all have our broken pieces. The truth of the matter is, is that there's somewhere deep inside that we are carrying shame, that we are carrying guilt, that we are carrying pain that is deep and we don't want to bring it to the surface and we don't want someone else to bring it to the surface. And even if, even if we, even if it doesn't affect us by someone else being broken, even if, even if it's not about it pulling things out of us, it makes us uncomfortable because we don't know what to say because it's not common because we don't know how we can fix it because we don't know the magic words or the magic scriptures that are going to help pull someone out of there and the truth is friends that's not our job do you know what our job is our job is to love one another well our job is to crawl into the pit with someone and hold their hand and put their your arms around them and sometimes not even say a word and it's so, it's so hard for some people. And I think it really is just because we go back to that Garden of Eden where we see nakedness and we, and we see shame. And I just wanna encourage all of you to begin to open up your heart and open up your eyes and open up your ears to see the brokenness in the people in your world. To be able to, to stop when someone that you know or that you don't know is, is going through hell or going through a moment. And I just wanna encourage you and, and remind you that you do not have to fix it. It is not your job to fix it and it is not your job to say the perfect thing. But we are called to love and we are called for fellowship and we need one another. We need to know that people see us. And, and I just wanna end with this. 
one of my one of my biggest struggles sometimes when I am deep into the pit, when I am deep into my sorrow, into my brokenness, I cry out to God and I say, God, does anyone see me? Does anyone see me, God? Or am I alone in this pit? Does anyone see me? And that happened to me tonight at the end of the conference. And I'm and I and I I walked through a crowd, a sea of women that were having a good time and that were connecting and and that were talking about their experiences at the conference. And I walked through that crowd and I and I felt like I had a I felt like I had a big S on me, like a scarlet letter. I felt like a or an A, that was an A, right? I felt like I like I stood out but in a bad way to where no one wanted to come close to me because I was I was the leper, you know. I was broken. I was I had my tear stained face and I just I could not crack a smile for anything and I I it took everything in me to just stop shaking because of the depth of my brokenness and as I walked through the crowd, I kept looking around and I kept saying, God, does anybody see me? Does anybody see me? And I sat at the end of the crowd in a chair and I'm crying out to God. And then a woman walked by and she walked by with her family, but she, she stopped and I saw her stop and turn around and she came and knelt down next to me. And she said, I just wanted to let you know that that you are not alone and that I see you. So friends, I just want you to know that your Heavenly Father knows the desires of your heart and the cries of your heart. And that in those moments of, of brokenness, He sees you and He loves you and He desires for you to be naked and exposed in his presence because that is a place of healing that is a place of restoration even if your circumstances don't change the presence of God in complete nakedness is the place of healing is the place of wholeness is the place of peace and is the place of joy and so don't be afraid don't be afraid to be transparent don't be afraid to break and to show your broken pieces because you will be surprised at who will stop and get in the pit with you. And if you see someone, I just pray that you stop long enough and put your schedule aside and, and do whatever you need to do to minister and to get in the pit with your sister or your brother even if just for a moment, to let them know that, they, that, that you see them and that they are not alone. I hope this encouraged you guys. And I just pray that God continues to give me amazing opportunities to encourage you and, and almost give you permission to be broken by being broken myself. All right, have a good night. God bless you all. And I just pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding guards your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Have a good night.